Good evening, and welcome to this, our first program for the year 2023. A happy new year to you from the set of choices. You know, every time we start a new year, it's an opportunity for a new beginning. And so we know that some of you will be thinking about a new beginning. You'll be thinking about what differently I can do this year as opposed to last year. We ask you to keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus because he is the author and the finisher of your faith. Here on the set of choices, we too are looking at a new beginning. Those of you who view our program will remember that last week we celebrated our 20th anniversary. So we are now starting our 21st year. We're entering into our third decade. And so we look forward to God's goodness and his continued grace as we bring these programs to you. Welcome once again. 2022 has passed, and we are now in 2023. As you said, new beginnings, fresh start. As we move into 2023, I think it's a good time for us to, as a people, to revisit um, what we would like to see, look at our accomplishments in 2022, and uh, add to what we want in 2023. And this should be the, you know, the, the trust of, of every person in, in this country to move forward, to move forward in a positive way where you could be, we could be productive and we could actually see movement in our lives, in our communities, and by extension, our nation. I think it's Isaiah. 60 verse 1 says arise and shine for the glory of the lord has come upon you and uh, i think we are well positioned now to experience god's goodness and god's grace as we move into 2023 and uh, we may have had some setbacks in 2022 or we may have done extremely well whatever it is we still have an opportunity to make a fresh start. Like some cricketers, when they've scored a hundred runs, they take a fresh start because they want to make another hundred and another hundred and so on. And that's how we we are to think progressive and productive. And I think that 2023, as a nation, as a people, I think we are well set to be very productive as we move forward. Was it Christmas Day or the day after Christmas? I read an article that there was a collaboration between GDF, um, Coast Guard, um, some pilots, and um, they collaborated on a project that could have become a disastrous one. The season, they were working out there to take care of their families, Guyana. And at that time when they, the, the, the Coast Guard got the call, and then they called for help, the pilots got the call, they could have been relaxing. Yeah. But they were pressed into duty. Men who didn't know each other's name, they didn't know where they came from, but they were seized by a duty, a sense of duty. We have to find this missing uh, fisherman. It took them a considerable time to do so. But they're working together. They were able to spot him, the Coast Guard uh, officers fighting the waves and whatever the perils of the of the ocean, and the pilots flying, and the communication was good, and they communicated. We spot him, and that information brought tremendous joy. When I read it, I stood up actually, and I pondered on it. 
Guyana working together, we are virtually unbeatable. Yeah. Not just Guyana, Guyana, us working together, all of us working together. We will scale mountains that are unimaginable. People, you know, when you work together, they are goals, they are objectives that you will be able to scale those things. When you work by yourself, you're really in, in a spot of bother there. I love that story. One line I read, whoever wrote it, said, God was good to Guyana at Christmas. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I believe that we want to also write that God is good to Guyana in 2023. Mm -hmm. And we are projecting that that same kind of latent ability with our skills, put it together, young men, mature men, making it happen. And a family received their loved one home. And I believe if we could work together in this brand new year that we have, it will be an awesome time for all of us. So I challenge us, uh, let's work together. Bishop, you know, teamwork makes the dream work. That sounds like the three point one. What you have what you have expressed just now resonates so deeply in the spirit that I couldn't help but jumping in. You know, lots of things we could accomplish if we only discover the art of teaming. Um, we are so gifted, so talented. The choices, for example, is a uh, is a beautiful imagery of teaming, a collection of great talent coming together for one purpose and thing. And um, sometimes all we do the most is to highlight the differences, but it is that difference that makes us so great that we can actually come together and get the job done. I can't do the kind of work. Uh, but those who are behind the camera are phenomenal in what they do. I can't be Dr. Lee. Dr. Lee is Dr. Lee. Um, I normally call Dr. Hudson the great Dr. Hudson, you know. These guys are phenomenal in their own way. But well, when you put us together, boy, we are truly unbeatable. I pray that I don't become like that. You know, I like the, the Christmas story, um, another Christmas story. What you read that happened either just around Christmas Day or just after. Um, the, um, the resilience of both the Coast Guard rank and the pilot, the coordination, the communication. I'm sure they did not know each other, but they were driven by a common cause, save the life of those who were at sea. We are rich as a nation in mineral resources. Um, economically, it bodes well for us. But I'm praying that in 2023, we find a way to become wealthy in our relationship with each other. Um, if we are able to do that, like you said, um, Nothing really will stop us as a man. Despite our size, despite our, 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 our geographic size, if we can engender great riches as a people, we have several mottos. But I, I would like to see in 2023, that's my prayer, that we work together as a nation and we will triumph over um, so many things that have kept us from becoming what God intended. Dr. Lee, as you talk about nation, I am reminded that we are the cooperative republic of Guyana. And that reminds me of a recent post I saw on WhatsApp that says, cooperation is always better than confrontation. Right. And I wish that we could use opportunity as we do so to encourage 2023, let's cooperate, let's collaborate. Let's leave the confrontation behind. And we will 
Uh, this reminds me of a, a national song, Pastor Paul. Let us cooperate for Guyana. Yeah? yeah? We still want people. We still want nation. We still want destiny according to the motto. But we are the cooperative republic of all beautiful Guyana. Well, yeah. should we go back? Should we go back a bit? We're looking at nationhood. And I'm thinking about the family structure and the foundation that is being built. So, because we cannot engender a nation together if the family is broken and separated. Mm. We need to get the family back to that place where they can understand working together for a common good. And this will spread to the community mm -hmm. and further to the nation at large. For too long we have been fragmented even at the level of the family. So we need to bring them back to that place. I, I, I like the word of God, you know, it talks about us loving each other, you know, okay. having that love, that genuine care about each other. And when we have that, when we can feel for each other, we will know what it means to be able to work together as a nation. But let us get back to the basic, the family unit, fulfilling its purpose. Psalm 133 says, Behold how good and pleasant it is for wow. brethren to dwell together mm -hmm. in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that bent down to the skirts of his garments. And the Jew of Hormon, as the Jew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessings, even like forevermore. And uh, I think we, we really need to reach to that place where God will command the blessing. But central to this commandment is unity. You use the word genuine, genuine unity, not unity on a superficial um, setting or cosmetic but unity from the heart. Yeah. Men speak what they mean and mean what they say. And, uh, you know, in that context, the, the scripture is very clear that he will command the blessed. But uh, our faith must be rooted in God. We must recognize that there is someone who superintends into the affairs or the affairs of men, and that person is God. And if we make that commitment and that dedication to God, the blessing could be commanded. Unity is, is important in this sense. Now, Phil, it's not like the observation that you've made about unity. <coughs> but what I want us to understand and appreciate is that the unity that we're positing and we're putting forward, it is not something that comes through manipulation, but through inspiration. We're not trying to have like everyone in an echo chamber and we all must have this one thought pattern or something of that sort. And that's why I really appreciate the leadership of our bishop. You know, he's a man that never tries to manipulate us and always encourages different opinions and all of these things. But he leads and he shares his vision through inspiration and we follow. And my favorite scripture is Proverbs 15.22. I love to share this as much as I can. That purposes are established in a multitude of counselors. And they're disappointed for a lack of counsel. And one of the things that I personally would encourage anyone, I've been strategic in my counselors and, and looking at mentors and looking at people that I can learn from. And every person that I looked at, they all had something different to offer. And I brought all of those things together. And we all, many of them are sat here tonight. But my point is, is that when you have a common goal, even to the Bible, countless scriptures, even in Corinthians, it shows us that it's okay to be different. This unity is not something that we all must be similar and everyone just, must just be monotonous and say one thing. We can have the same message, but we can preach it different. And so as we strive for nation building, and making the great, it's okay to appreciate the little differences that you have, but we have a common goal, and that common goal is for the greatness of Guyana. 
And when that time comes, we put those differences aside and we work for the building of the end. God is a God of second chances. We're talking about 2023. And I want to remind us as a nation, first as panel and as a nation, God is a God of second chances. It was, where am I seeing that? There was this uh, character in the Bible. You know, his name was Jonah. He received a message. His message was to go and save an entire nation. But he chose to disobey because he thought, he in his human form, he thought it was better to let the nation perish. He didn't listen to God. However, he got a message to go and save a nation. He thought that they should perish. He almost perished. <laughs> and then he realized that, okay, God, you're right. They deserve, they deserve a second chance. And God gave him a second chance, Limar. Yeah. God gave him a second chance to go and save that nation, despite of all or in spite of all of their wrongdoing. Where, where am I going with this? We are in going into 2023 or we are in 2023. And Guyana, we have another chance. You, you heard all the panelists or the speakers before me. We have another chance. Another chance to get it right. Another chance to unite. Another chance to come together. Yeah. Another chance to grow. Another chance. Let's stop the fighting. Let's stop the hating. We have another chance. We all here, we're alive in 2023. We have another chance. We can do this. Love, care, support, share, encourage. I was speaking to a guy today on the road, the uh, day we were recording, and he, he was telling me in our conversation, the Bible is not about one love. He said, when I read the Bible, I know we speak about one love, but I want to tell you it's not love. <laughs> Share the love, not love. I want to put that thought alongside Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Hear what it says. It says, remember you not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Lots of things would have gone wrong around us in this nation. Yeah. Hear the admonition of, of this prophet. Uh, not that we shouldn't consider some of the effects, right? But remember not. Put it aside. The things of old. Because, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. This is God's promise to us. To us, Let us forget those things that are behind and mm -hmm. press forward. Mm -hmm. Because this is a new season for mm -hmm. us. And we have the backing of the Word of God. And you know the Word of God can't lie. You know, Reverend Semple, one of those things you're talking about that we can look forward to. And uh, I would want to say it's a clarion call to all our young people. It's the whole notion of volunteerism. I believe... God has blessed our young people with brilliance, uh, with uh, enthusiasm. They have a passion for what they do. And so let us find ways to volunteer again. Be a blessing. See and explore what you can do. Uh, the, it's not uh, a, a situation where it would look good on your resume. Alone, but it is something that God has placed inside of all of us. And I want to encourage our young people as we explore our passion and our love for God, our love for people, our love for nation, our love for country, our love for communities. Let us find a way to be a blessing to one another because God has given you those special skill sets for such a time as this. If there's any, if there's one thing that I would like to see um, for my nation in this new year or, or some improvement, it would be the whole notion of recognizing good work. 
Now, what do I mean by that? It's a very vague statement, I know. Recognition of good work. Now, some people say, yes, you recognize me by paying me more. Yeah, that's part of it as well. <laughs> but for me, another aspect of it is that I think very often, um, and this happens in the home, in the workplace, in wider society, where if somebody who you may not like, or you and them don't get along, as we say, does something good, we tend to find every reason to not recognize it. We tend to find every reason to say why it is good, why, it, why that thing that they did was bad. And I think we need to be more mature in Guyana. And when something good is done, even if it's done by somebody who you don't see eye to eye with, you recognize and you acknowledge it's good. And sometimes we, we do acknowledge, but we always throw in a butt. Right? <laughs> so I think if we're gonna, when things are, when things are well done, we must say so. Yeah. That is my one wish that I would like to see for my nation in 2020. You actually suggested that we are very immature sometimes. And I want to agree with you that the way we conduct ourselves demonstrates a high level of immaturity. And that brings me back to a comment that was made earlier. That whatever we do has a severe impact upon the generation coming. Because there is always um, leaving and entering. There is always a generation coming, like here in this new year. Left one, entering in the other. And the way you do so is important. I am concerned, very concerned that, for example, our the next generation is being parented by, by, the, by social media. And we have given up parenting. So we just leave our young children, our nice, loving baby girl and baby boy, to be cultivated, to be trained by, by social media, media rather than investing in strong parenting. I am who I am because of a community. And my friends here, they have all invested in me. And sometimes I get the, the impression that we just allow some of our children to grow up accidentally, which is a waste of natural god blessed resources. Deacon Arson was making reference to recognizing persons in our midst rather than well. And right in our midst here, I think we have Dr. Marcel Raymond Hudson, who served well yes. as a chief education officer. Yes. You yes. can recognize him for his service to this nation. I think he did well. And even at the local church level, he makes a very good contribution to what we are doing. We must give kudos to yes. kudos. Yes. Thank you. But it goes back to the point that um, I think um, Reverend Fano or um, Orson is making about maturity. You know, we are 50 plus years as a nation, and I think um, it behooves all of us to recognize the work, to recognize the importance, recognize the contribution irrespective of our ethnicity and you know sometimes we are limited or, or we are constrained to recognize person based on the ethnic and i'm hoping and i'm praying yes. that in 2020 yes. yes. yeah, one people is. one nation one yes. destiny will become a reality where we recognize each other for the contribution towards building this nation oh beautiful yeah you well, know, since we're talking about recognition, well, you know, I must <laughs> You know, I must and love recognition. <laughs> anything that is unrecognized is uncelebrated. Yes. And anything that is uncelebrated is unrewarded. And anything that is unrewarded exits your life. Yeah. Here, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27. It says, Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, uh -huh. when it is in the power of your hand to do it. We live in a we live in a society where we know, you know. I'm gonna say this lightly, but you understand. Lots of people are acting. Some of those people need to be conformed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Let yes. us conform those yes. people. Let yeah. us move in this direction. If you want this one Guyana, we gotta conform. Yes. 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 With who's yes. not good, once it's in the power of your hand. Yes. 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 Could you read again? 
Proverbs, Proverbs 3, 27. It says, Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thine hands to do it. Wow. I want to thank God for President Muhammad the young man holding that office. And he has been the patient to do what is in his heart and what is will benefit this nation. Let us together hold his hand up. Let us pray. I thank you for every single day that you have access to the airwaves. You lead the nation in prayer for President Ali and for many in leadership. Leadership is an extremely lonely place. The people who want to, to lead, God is a good God in that He will not allow certain people who can create disaster to hold such such reigns. I think a lot about Him. I think a lot about the responsibility upon His shoulders in this land. And I think about the words of Jesus. Jesus said, don't let your hearts be troubled. There are lots of us who have been worried, troubled for the last couple of years. Hold fast to this word. Don't let your hand be troubled. I hear your people saying to each other, I got you. And I want to say to us, God has got us. Amen. As we go into 2023, Hold the hand of the president in prayer. Pray for him. Support him. Give him a shout out. Um, let us believe God because we believe that that kind of arrangement is done with the okay from above. And I'll tell you this. If God has got it, if God has got our leaders, we'll be all right. Mm -hmm. And we have to collaborate and come together in a way that we have never done before. Watch this nation benefit all who call this home. God bless you. May you have a prosperous 2023. We thank you for joining us on Choices today. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly, LNP Durban Street, Workmanville, Georgetown, Guyana, for any of our special services. I'm Silesia on behalf of the set, reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.